And it doesn't matter how talented you are, it doesn't matter what genre of music you're making, it doesn't matter how long you've been doing it, you're not going to succeed, you'll always be a hobbyist. Now if that bothers you, it should. What's going on guys? Adam Ivey, sellmusic.com, here to help you go further, faster in your music career by sharing proven marketing techniques and strategies to help transform that passion for making music and turn it into a legitimate business that's gonna provide you with freedom and fulfillment, two of the most important things in life in general. Now let's face it, whether we just started making music, whether you're 14 or 64, doesn't matter how much money, how much resources, time, energy you've put into making music, ultimately, we're on a road to failure. It's going to be a huge disappointment in a few years. We're going to realize that. You're never gonna make any money. You're gonna sacrifice relationships. You're gonna end up broke, penniless, uh, with a ton of regret. I think that that's BS too, but our friends and family, people around us, coworkers, bosses especially, are gonna to wanna to make you believe that. And why? It's out of the safety of them. They wanna see you stable. They wanna see you uh, on a path that they can understand, but as music creators, people that are pursuing a music career or pursuing any type of business as an entrepreneur, maybe you wanna do YouTube full time, we're crazy, we're not normal. And that's what the channel family here is consistent of or comprised of people just like you and I who are not normal. So if you're not normal, join the channel family here. What I'm getting at guys is we have to be obsessive with this thing. We have to have this vision in our head that's so vivid that if somebody asks us where we're gonna be in five or 10 years, we could talk about it for like 25 minutes as if it, it already happened and time just hasn't caught up yet. When we're a little kid, I remember the first time I ever had, ever had a pair of Jordans, right? I think I was in fifth or sixth grade. I remember uh, these white and um, red Jordans with crisscross, I think they're Jordan 11s. My favorite pair of shoes, like almost to this day, something I was so proud of. I would go to school and we didn't have any money. My parents found this on like the clearance table in the back of some tent sale where I grew up in central Wisconsin. That's, that's a true story. Uh, and I went to school and every single day I would wear my like kick around shoes to school. I'd have my good shoes in my backpack because I wanted these things to last forever. I wanted to show off and feel important and cool because let's face it, a lot of times in, as, as an adolescent, we don't feel cool. And music's the same way. We wanna go out and we wanna show off these brand new shoes as far as your brand and your music and maybe a new video that you spent so much time and effort getting ready for YouTube. You put it out there and it's like crickets because it's not as easy as going to school and showing off these pair of shoes because that's a material possession. What we're doing is we're establishing a catalog of work. We're building a brand around ourselves in which we have to have enough confidence to be able to go out and make a fool of ourselves because early on it's gonna be pretty cringy but ultimately we have to have that focus, we have to have that vision and the determination to say I'm important enough for an audience of X amount of people to care about what my creative abilities are. And it's not gonna be something that a whole lot of people can understand. I referenced this in an older video, but my really good friend Isaac once said to me, he goes, Adam, we're trying to explain to someone what the color blue looks like when all we have to do is show them. Shout out to Isaac, one of my best friends, he's like a brother to me. Now that's the absolute truth though. If you're out there and you're frustrated and you're banging your head up against the wall and your wife or your coworkers or your family, your mom, your dad, they're telling you like, hey, stop it. Hey, I'm not supportive of this. Hey, you're spending too much time. You're spending too much money. Go outside and play, for lack of a better term. They just don't get it. They're looking out for your back. They're looking out for your uh, security. But they don't understand what's possible in life because they're not going down the same path. Same goes for guys like Elon Musk, guys who have a lawn care business. Uh, my little brother just started a lawn care business last year. I've been helping him as much as I can. I'm not gonna take credit for anything that he's doing. Shout out to my little brother, Michael, um, doing really great things and I'm super proud of him. But he said, you know what, Adam, I can do some stuff. You know, he lives in Wisconsin. He's like, I can buy a plow for my truck. I can offer snow removal, uh, you know, services during the winter and when it warms up, I have access, you know, I can have access to uh, one of these industrial lawnmowers. I'm like completely out of my comfort zone talking about this stuff because um, even though I have mowed like a ton of grass in my life, I don't know about that business. That's what I'm getting at. But people are gonna tell him that it's a waste of time. People are gonna say, oh, that's just a side hustle. That's not a real business. Are you paying taxes? Like the number one thing people always ask, oh, you better pay taxes. It's like they'll tell you you're gonna fail and then really worried about your accounting. It's, it's kind of hilarious. Now we need to be obsessive with what we're doing so that no amount of objection, no amount of discouragement is gonna slow us down. We're gonna be able to have that confidence, build that confidence up and smile and say, okay, 
I understand, I know that whatever you're saying to me is out of love, but I'm gonna have to respond out of love and say, let me show you, just give me a little while. That's how we gotta do it. Because when you start off and you're 14 or 15 just getting into music or whether you picked up a guitar in your 30s and you said, you know what, there's something here or just like me, I didn't start producing music till I was 21, if I remember correctly, in about 2005, 2006. So I just turned 35 like a week ago, so it's pretty accurate. I was way behind the curve. I had taken piano lessons. Uh, my grandmother was an organist and a pianist and she taught me for a year or two, but I didn't pay any attention. That wasn't fun. I wanted to go outside and play. I wanted to watch cartoons. So the music didn't really stick. And then in junior high, I played coronet. It's like a trumpet. It's like a little stubby uh, trumpet. And that didn't stick with me either until I discovered that, hey, you can create music. You can compose with more than just what you've had available to you up to this point. And that's when I discovered beat making and you know composing instrumentals and working with artists and writing, getting into all of that. There's still people to this day that think I'm crazy. You know, I bought my house with the music money. I bought my I-8 with the music money, with, with, with music, with marketing. These are my passions. I've turned them into businesses. And at 35, I feel really good about it. Now you guys can do the same thing. This isn't a video about being too old. This isn't a video about being too young your obstacles in life, addressing them one by one, it's silly. We're all gonna have obstacles no matter what we do. If you're going to college, you're gonna have the obstacle of how am I gonna pay for this? How am I gonna show up on time? How am I gonna work and go to school? Maybe you had a child and you're trying to go to school. The thing is, if you're obsessed with the result, if you're obsessed with the follow through, ultimately it happens on some level. You also have to be open to um, different opportunities because I know a lot of people, including some of my students who went into it with one goal and had their mind opened up to another opportunity that they didn't even know existed. Now in the comments below, I wanna know how long you've been making music and I wanna know your number one supporter and your number one doubter because we all need to be able to be there for each other and really grow together. If you haven't yet, I want you to watch this video right here. This is going to give you even more encouragement and some direction as far as growing your audience and then smash that little button to join the channel family here with a bunch of weirdos, not normal people, so we can band together. Then smash that little bell icon to make YouTube happy with the thumbs up and all that good stuff. I hope you come connect with me over on Instagram because together, once we connect, we're gonna show the world what we're capable of and how crazy we can be. So I look forward to seeing you over there and I appreciate you watching.